Welcome back to Ilal Live. Now, South African motorists will pay between 48 rand 60 and 91 rand 20 more to fill their cars with petrol from now on. The Department of Mineral Resources and Energy released the latest adjustments in fuel prices, showing that unleaded 95 petrol will increase by 1 rand 14, while unleaded 93 will be hiked by 1 rand 8. That takes the petrol price as high as 25 rand 68 inland and 24 rand 96 on the coast. This is, of course, having an already difficult economic pressure that many South Africans are feeling at the moment. Joining us now to discuss this, I'd like to welcome Vis van Reddy, who is the national convener for the People Against Petroleum and Paraffin Increases. Vis van, good day and thank you so much for joining us on Hila Live. Good day and thank you for having me on your program. No, it's an absolute pleasure. Vis van, um, so the government would point out two things. They'd say the Rand dollar exchange, which is quite poor at the moment, and then we've got, of course, the Brent crude uh, uh, oil price, which is sitting above the $90 per uh, barrel mark. Is that an enough reason to really have petrol at this high at this moment? It's certainly not. And uh, it is a, a typical response from a government that's not in touch with the reality on the ground, a government that's not compassionate, a government that cannot think out of the box and find innovative ways of dealing with this issue of, uh, of escalating fuel prices. What we need to understand is that this is the third consecutive increase in fuel prices in the past three months, mm -hmm. bringing our fuel prices in South Africa to the highest it's ever been in recorded history. Now, the, uh, the implications of these increases uh, is far-reaching, particularly, particularly for South Africans, and not just motorists, but every South African. Uh, you must understand that when the fuel prices go up, uh, everything goes up, including the cost of living, the cost of food, the cost of public transport, and the highest, the hardest hit are the poorest mm -hmm. of the poor. Now, in South Africa, we live in a country where the unemployment rate is the highest in the world. Our poverty levels are edging around 55 to 60 percent, which means that life for ordinary South Africans is going to become extremely difficult, especially with these fuel uh, hikes that are just uh, that are taking place. Now, what the government does is they give us the excuse that the rand is weakening against the dollar, or the dollar is strengthening against the rand, and that the the, the value of the crude oil is going up, and that's the reason why fuel prices are going up. And if you listen to uh, spokespeople from the AA, for example, mm. uh, they will tell you, well, there's nothing we can do about it. And this is not true. Uh, the fact of the matter is, as people against petroleum price increases, Papi, we have researched this extensively. And we know that there are ways in which the government can actually intervene and bring our fuel prices down. Uh, you know, what we need is a government that is compassionate, a government that understands that these fuel hikes is going to have a, a, a disastrous impact on South Africans. In fact, the latest increase is catastrophic for all South Africans. Now, what are we proposing? We are saying that, number one, uh, the whole fuel pricing structure around the world is controlled by a mafia led by America. Uh, the OPEC uh, oil producing countries, they, uh, their fuel prices are carefully monitored and it's, it's being uh, managed so that the dollar is strengthened. When we buy uh, crude oil, we actually buy the crude oil in dollars and not in rands. Uh, the same thing is applied in other countries. Now, if you take India, for example, India, because of the pressure that uh, the, the, the people put on the government because fuel prices were going sky high and people could not afford it. They took to the streets. They, they told the government, and at that time it was the, uh, the, uh, the Congress party, that if they do not bring the fuel prices down, they will kick them out of government. They'll vote them out. And that's exactly what they did. So the BJP party came into power. Now, the BJP party was put into between a rock and a hard place they either uh, continue with uh, uh, buying oil from OPEC countries and run the risk of being outvoted, or they choose to break away from OPEC cartel and move to other countries like Russia and Iran. 
And that's exactly what they did. So if you look at uh, the Indian uh, oil purchases in the past financial year, the largest uh, amount of crude oil that India bought was actually from Russia. Uh, so Russia was its largest uh, fuel supplier in the past financial year. Now, we have talked much about BRICS. Uh, mm. So we are in a good position in this country to use the BRICS platform to say, uh, to, to tell OPEC that you cannot uh, uh, hold us to ransom with your prices. If you continue increasing these prices the way you are, we are going to move to countries like Iran and Russia, and we're going to buy our, our crude oil from there. So that's the one part. The second is that part of the increases uh, includes a 30 cents state levy, state mm -hmm. levy. Now, this is a government-imposed tax. Our fuel taxes in South Africa is the highest in the whole of Africa, close to 40% of what we pay uh, at, the, at the fuel pumps goes to government taxes. And we all know that the government has been mismanaging uh, its finances, so much so that corruption, state capture, all of these things is costing the people of this country trillions of rands. So we are funding that mismanagement and corruption in government. So what we are saying as PAPI is that, first, remove the taxes entirely. Mm -hmm. The government needs to understand that these fuel increases is going to have a, a completely negative impact on people, South Africans, and it needs to act and intervene. Mm -hmm. But the government is failing to do that because, and I, I dare to say this, our ANC government is highly compromised. Mm -hmm. You see, ANC leaders in the 1994, 1993, actually became shareholders in these petrol companies to such an extent that today, they are controlled by these petrol companies, by these oil companies. So uh, obviously, they are being led by the news, and they are unable to uh, make decisions that benefit the people of the country because they are concerned that it's going to affect their own pockets. What we need in South Africa, uh, we need leaders who are more in love with the people and concerned about the people's interests than in love with their own pockets and their own interests. But sadly, we don't have that situation here in this country. So I just want to expand on that a little, a little bit more. Uh, our taxes, uh, the government gets a revenue of 96 billion rands a year from fuel taxes. The 96 billion rand can be struck immediately. If I were the president, if I were Ramaphosa, I will remove the fuel levies completely right now and I will be saving all our motorists and saving the country by 40%. Where would I get that money from? I will impose what is called a, a, a super tax on companies that are listed on the JSC that amass huge wealth, profits from our state country's resources, like the mining companies, for example. So I would impose a, a super tax on those companies. And at the moment, on the reserves in the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, there's trillions of rands. And that money can be used to replace the fuel levies. And immediately that's done. 40% fuel prices will come down by 40%. So that's where you will get that money from. Now, there, there are other you know, innovative uh, creative ways the government can intervene in South Africa. But unfortunately, our South African government, the ANC in particular, is compromised. Ramaphosa himself, we all know, is a businessman. His business interest comes first. He's become a billionaire because of his interests and shares that he holds in some of these companies that are amassing great wealth uh, at the expense of South Africans. Two South African... Viswan, sorry, I have to stop you there because we are against time. Uh, Viswan, I need to ask, um, uh, from, from your perspective, the people against petroleum and paraffin increases, is there going to be action on the ground along with other civil societies to really address this problem? Because what South Africans can't need, and I even speak for myself, is another petrol increase come November. Is there going to be any action on the ground to address these problems towards government? Absolutely. The only way that we can send a loud and clear message to this government is through mass action, 
through countrywide protests. That is the only language that this government is going to understand. I want to say this. You know, when you see something that is wrong, and you know it is wrong, we need to immediately act. If we don't act, we are just as guilty as those who are committing the offense. How do we act? We start joining the protests. In fact, uh, as people against petroleum price increases, Papi, we are inviting political parties, civic organizations, everybody who, who says that they have the interests of South Africans at heart to join us, including religious organizations, to join us as we begin rolling mass action to bring this government to its knees if we have to, so that they can go back to the drawing board and bring down these fuel prices. First of all, Reddy, thank you so much for joining us here on Hilal Live. Thank you very much. That's First Fund Ready. He's the national convener for the people against petroleum and paraffin increases. As it stands, over 25 rand for a litre of fuel, it is really taking a toll on so many South Africans. We are going to be going now for Isha Salah to Makatul Mukarrabah. And after that, I'll have your latest in news. Do stay tuned.